to care for him who shall have borne the battle and for his widow and his orphan. Abraham Lincoln, Second Inaugural Address, March 4, 1865. Hi, I'm Pete Young. I'm the director of Riverside National Cemetery. At 922 acres, Riverside National Cemetery is the third largest cemetery managed by the National Cemetery Administration for the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. Since 2000, Riverside National Cemetery has been the most active cemetery in the system, averaging 35 services a day, Monday through Friday. Despite this high volume, our goal is to always treat each service as if it is the only one of the day and provide each veteran with the dignity and respect their service and sacrifice earn them. This video is coming to you today through a collaboration between Riverside National Cemetery and the San Bernardino County Department of Veterans Affairs. In the next few minutes you will learn about the history of Riverside National Cemetery as well as important details on VA burial benefits to help you in your time of need. Thank you. Riverside National Cemetery was established in 1976 through the transfer of 740 acres from March Air Force Base to the VA. The transferred parcel had been U.S. Army Camp William G. Hahn during World War II. The camp was used as a training site for coastal artillery and anti-aircraft gunnery crews and housed a camp for Italian and German prisoners of war. By the mid-1970s, the two Southern California National Cemeteries, Fort Rosecrans in San Diego, and Los Angeles National Cemetery had reached capacity for casket burials. The Riverside site was selected in 1976 to provide full burial options for Southern California veterans and their families. An additional 181 acres were transferred by the U.S. Air Force in 2003. Riverside National Cemetery was established in 1976. The first burial took place that day with the reinterment of the remains of Riverside Native Son and World War II Medal of Honor recipient, Ismael Viegas. Viegas was awarded the Medal of Honor for bravery at the cost of his own life on the Via Verde Trail on the island of Luzon in the Philippines, March 20, 1945. He was buried on Luzon after the war when his remains were moved to Olivewood Cemetery in Riverside. Prior to the opening of RNC, the VA asked the Viegas family for permission to move his mail one more time and to honor him as the first burial in the new National Cemetery. Fifteen Medal of Honor recipients were on hand on opening day to honor their comrade. RNC's dramatic landscape features meandering roads extending from a central boulevard with memorial traffic circles, lakes, committal shelters, a memorial amphitheater and monuments including two national memorials. RNC is the home of the National Medal of Honor Memorial, one of four sites in the United States to be so designated. The Riverside Memorial is located within the third traffic circle on LeMay Boulevard. Its black granite walls display the gold-etched names of the more than 3,400 Medal of Honor recipients since the creation of the medal by President Abraham Lincoln. The memorial was dedicated November 5th, 1999, with 85 Medal of Honor recipients in attendance. The National Prisoner of War Missing in Action Memorial was dedicated September 16th, 2005. The bronze statue, sculpted by local artist and Vietnam veteran Lee Millet, depicts an American serviceman on his knees bound by his captors. The statue is bordered by black granite slabs depicting prison bars. The Veterans Memorial is located just inside the main gate to RNC, adjacent to the information booth. Created by sculptor A. Thomas Schomburg, is comprised of a 12-foot black monolith. In the fashion of the Plains Indians, lies a figure wrapped in a poncho. The unidentifiable body represents all Americans who have died in combat. In addition to serving as the committal shelter for very large services, the Memorial Amphitheater is the site of services to observe Veterans Day and Memorial Day, as well as the Concert for Heroes, 
which takes place during the 4th of July weekend and is the only orchestral event of its type at any national cemetery in the country. The first thing to remember about scheduling a service at any national cemetery is that the National Cemetery Administration does not reserve grave sites. All service preparations are made at the time of need. When an eligible veteran or the spouse or minor child of the veteran dies, the next of kin will present the veteran's DD Form 214 to the funeral home of their choice. The funeral director will work with the family to prepare the burial application and will forward the application and the DD Form 214 to the National Cemetery Administration National Scheduling Center in St. Louis. The scheduling center will work with the funeral home and the cemetery to schedule the committal service. If the veteran's DD-214 is not available, RNC will help the family get a replacement. It would be at this stage, while meeting with the funeral director, that the family would ask about military honors and the burial flag for the veteran. The family will fill out the form to order the grave marker following the service on the day of interment. The simplest way to remember what is included in the VA burial benefit is this. Anything that takes place outside of the cemetery at the funeral home, selection of a casket, embalming, cremation, purchase of a cremation urn, transportation, etc., is the family's responsibility. At the cemetery, the gravesite or columbarium niche, the opening and closing of the grave, the marker, military honors, and the presidential memorial certificate are provided by the VA at no charge to the family.